We are back, ladies and gentlemen. What is going on? It is your boys, the heavyweight bros. Different episode number two. Sunday. We're here Sunday morning, October 31st, fresh off of Halloween. How are you doing, man? I ain't seen you in a couple of days, but it's been a minute. I've been seeing the positive perception on the videos, man. How are you feeling right now? Yo, listen, I, I can't lie, man. I, I've been getting text messages. I've been getting phone calls. I've, people have been hitting me up. Uh, I'm excited, man. Uh, first of all, thank you for those who actually watched the first episode and gave their honest feedback about how they felt and, you know, share, <laughs> share with us, you know, the fact that they love what we was doing. Um, it, it felt very good to us to know that what we were enjoying was also enjoyed by the people, um, those that we love, those that we care about. Um, you know, support is everything, man. So appreciate y'all. I mean, that's what we do it for, right? As we do it for y'all. So like, obviously this is like therapy for us because we get to actually talk about these things and like we get to hear people um, either agree, disagree, some of that. So like, we want to give you the best product moving forward. So like your voices matter, your comments matter. Your likes, of, your likes and subscribes also matter too. <laughs> don't forget, don't, don't forget that right over there because uh, right we try to get to uh, right here, right here, right here. I don't really know where it's at. Because what is it? It's, it's four, it's four K views before we start getting paid, right? It's it matters. <laughs> like, yo, get above. Like, yo, I don't care if, like, yo, instead of Coco Melon, you put this on right after. You know, get your kids educated on like what really matters in these streets. Right. You know right. what I mean? First one was the backdrop. I know the backdrop. It's like, what is it? Just a big sheet? Who's that grandma's blanket? We're we like, in the trenches. We are we in the trenches. The terror dome right now. All right. And when we look back on these episodes and we see where we have back to and, and to where we have gone, they're gonna be like, yo, I was going back when they had the blue tarp in the back of them, and Joe I was wearing the Miami Dolphins gear when they wasn't winning. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> I know it's I'm only one in the set though. I know it's I'm only one repping the set. Hey, That's listen, all I'm saying. Hey, it's Sunday. Hey, listen, it's Sunday. I'm, hey, listen. We got all my Springfield Tigers. Shout out to my Springfield Tigers. All right. We got seven teams in the playoffs, unfortunately. You know, yesterday, um, my nine U team and our 14 U team took an L, but everybody else was successfully going to the championship. You know what I mean? But we digress. We digress. So we are taking care of the backdrop. All right. We already got somebody who said, yo, listen, I enjoyed the show. I want to do your backdrop. On top of that, I want to do some search, some search for you guys and get you some merch. So before you know, we already moving on to merch. We're gonna have something for you guys to rock. You know, you're gonna see us with it on the show first. You're gonna be like, yo, that shirt is fire. You know, if I see somebody walking around the city with a heavyweight bro shirt on, you know what I mean? I might mess around and buy you dinner or something. That joint would look fire. All right. Listen, man, one of my favorite phrases in life is it's for me. If it's free, it's for me. Facts. And I'll take three. Facts. So listen, if you got <laughs> donations in any <laughs> way, shape, or form, if you want uh, if you have a uh, clothes or gear that you want to get out there. I will wear it. Just make sure it is in my size. Queen mattress. You know what I'm saying? The 5XL assassin, like I said. Mm -hmm. I know my brother over here is a little bit slimmer. So what do you like? Uh, two like that? I'm in between a three and a two. It depends on what type of shirt it is. Because uh, well, there was a point in time when we was rocking the same type of shirt. And it's like you're making your way uh, downward. So it's like oh, yeah. um, hats. Uh, what you call it? We have no problem plugging to people. What we want is we want as much local uh, businesses and local talent out there as much as possible. So, exactly. like, exactly. if you what you call it, if you do tarps, if you have clothes, if you have any sort of business that you want out there, we will take the time out to shout you out. Just make sure you let us know uh, where people can find you, what your product is, if you have a website, if you have an Instagram, let us know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another thing, it was like the video. Our, we connected with a video guy. My little cousin hit me up. Was like, "Hey, listen, man, I do parties. I do." I do proms, I do whatever you take, you know what I mean? So, you know, he's going to come in with his video extraordinaire uh, knowledge and he's going to show us how to get it done. So this choppiness you see here, it's going to look different. You got to catch us at 4K. Is that what the kids say? They call it 4K. All right, we're going to be out here. All right. On top of that, I know that a lot of people was like, hey, Raisin, man, you keep hitting me with the, you talking to your side piece on the phone voice. That ain't working. All right. You keep cutting in and out. I was like, all right, I'm going to bring it up out there for y'all to make sure that you can hear me. Because I watched the video myself and I was like, man, there was some, some pretty funny jokes in there that didn't get heard. We want to make sure that y'all are getting everything that we're giving y'all when we're in this video. All right. Two of the main comments that we got back were sound and speed. So like yeah. I said, we're going to try and keep these videos 
uh, underneath an hour and a half for you guys, you know, try to get all the content in and out. And then, like, as you said, like, you know, projecting the voice a little more, no more late night love and stuff like that. But as far as sound also is we are looking for a new intro song. We don't have an intro song as of right now. So, like, also local talent, local rappers, local R&B singers, if you guys want to take a shot at an intro, we will watch what we will put it in the begin in the beginning of the video. We will put your song out there. We will put you out there. Um, and like if it sticks, it sticks. If it but if it's caca poo poo pee pee, we gonna wow. let you know. Wow. But, but like yeah, we're looking for some intro stuff because like if you want to send us some stuff, send it because otherwise you're gonna pee. It's gonna be us freestyling on the beginning of this video. And trust me, that is something that you don't want. I feel like a whole lot of people already stepped away. This so <laughs> arms are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't want that, like make sure you guys send it. Um, send in that stuff um, for us. Uh, we'd be much appreciated. Please much, do. Much please appreciated. do. Please do. But like, watch out, let's get right into it, right? Yeah. Uh, so we had a Thursday night football game this past week that we uh, both kind of incorrectly predicted. Uh, the Cardinals lost to the Green Bay Packers, yes, twenty-four to twenty-one. Yes. Um, <laughs> why did it, why did the Cardinals lose this game? The former undefeated Cardinals, who were like we we said, like they were on pace to like you know do some damage, like immediately as soon as we crowned them, the bad luck hits them. Like, what did you see from that game that uh, that went different? can't win the game if you turn the ball over. You can't win the game if you turn the ball over. I know everybody's going to say, hey, A-Ron did this, and he went off that way. But for me, it wasn't the offense. It was the defense. You know, it's, it's, it's really hard to keep Kyler Murray in the pocket. It's really hard to stop those wide receivers. And if the running game is going well, which it did, you, you, you kind of feel like it's going to be downhill for the Cardinals and everybody's going to get ran over. But that's not what I saw. I think Kyler fumbled the ball twice. Twice. I think uh, I mean the game two interceptions and the the game came down to uh, an interception at the very last play of the game in the end zone. Which had me tight. Which had me tight. Had me tight. Had me tight. I'm on this little betting app. I know. I mean, I don't bet. You know what I mean? But as you know, every now and again, I like to compete and stuff. I'm I'm all about competitive spirit. Kyler Murray has 295 yards. He's throwing a five yard touchdown pass to an AJ Green who needs one reception. And it's an interception. I was like, "He just finished praising how well AJ Green has been playing this offense." And he looked he looked completely lost on the play. To be honest, it looked like he thought it was a run play, and it looked like Kyler knew it was a pass play. And, and the, the only, too. And the only person that knew what was going on was the guy who got the interception in the end zone to save the game. Uh, yeah, and like you know, that's the Cardinals did something to the game. Um, but I think the Packers also did a lot of things well to win the game. And it's like, you know, like, that's what happens when no you Devante. have no De- like Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, their two top receivers are out for COVID. Yep. So uh, us, like everybody else, completely wrote them off. Um, so they were just like, yeah, we got no receivers. How about we just run the ball to death? We got A.J. Dillon. We got Aaron Jones back here. So, like, how about we just run it down your throat and Aaron Rodgers will just play. I, like, it's it sucks to say game manager because like, that's not what he's doing. Mm-hmm. But it's like he's just playing mistake-free football. And it's like that's the type of game that they needed to play in order to win this game. Yeah, and A.J. Dillon, local football player, went to Houston, right? Okay, I was about to say, I was like, he went to Central High? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I was no, like, how local? Because I ain't never Church heard Church about this. Massachusetts. I'm pretty sure he's from Yeah, they, they definitely made sure that uh, they asked us the, the weapons that they had in absence of the uh, And the offense held it together, and they put points on the board, but ultimately, for me, defense won that game. Defense won that game. I'd have to agree. Um, it's it's kind of great that we started off on this foot of mm-hmm. uh, we both, you know, got the first game incorrectly. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're both kind of starting off on an even playing field. Because I was thinking, I was like, yo, we should start making some bets on this. Because like I said, like, you've been on a little addict spree on some of these bets and stuff like that. I was like, I feel like we should have something for ourselves. So like, mm-hmm. this is my proposition to you. Okay. All right. So we have a full slate of games this week. Okay. We should make our picks on the game uh, of every single game. Just make a quick We'll call it like, we'll call this a two minute drill. Okay. We'll run through these. We will make our picks in under two minutes, right? Um, and at the end of the week, we'll see who got most of the, get more of the games correct. Um, and then whoever gets the more games correct that week. So like, for instance, there's like 14 games this week. Uh-huh. If I get nine right and you get seven right, that means I win this week and I get a point. Okay. Right. And then uh, we'll go all the way to the end of the season. And okay. whoever has the most points, okay. I feel like we have to make some sort of, it has to be something like satisfying. Like it's, if it's gonna be a season long, we heavyweight bros. I know there's something that we both can agree that we really like. I mean, I love me some wings. Mm. Love me some pizza. I love a good steak. 
but we gotta do what y'all. Um, what about? I was gonna say Outback Steakhouse. We could do better than that. Texas mm-hmm. Roadhouse. We could do better than that. Mm-hmm. What about a nice uh Ruth Chris dinner on you? Definitely. Oh, what's going on you? On oh, you? Oh, how about this? We'll Definitely. put it out there. Ruth Chris meal for two. So if you want to take your lovely wife, you can do that. And I'll take whichever lady you want. Uh, section. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like maybe they have like the like maybe they hit Super maybe they check all my boxes because with the fancy cars, the women in the caviar. I'm sipping all over the world. Yeah, listen, we got. I'm gonna have a sweepstakes in these contests. So like, who wants a nice Ruth Chris dinner right, listen, with your boy? Listen, What's going it's, on? It's official. We gotta make it. <laughs> all right, we gotta make sure Big Nasty has a sip corner where he's like, "Hey, listen, lady, this is what I'm looking for. Is this what you're looking for? We might even cut from this from this game, and he come back off with a nice little. You know, we got the robe with the chest out. With a with an ascot. <laughs> no, nah, it's gonna be a robe with the chest out, and I'm gonna have a corn pop pipe. Like, <laughs> it's gonna have Maxwell and the Woo! Yeah, yeah, let's start it off right. Uh, we got a couple games on the slate today. Um, first game on the docket is the Panthers versus the Falcons. What do you got? I'm going, I'm going, Falcons. I'm going Panthers. So, like, I was starting off on the right foot. I, I think I, that Atlanta B is awful. So what you got? Then we have the Titans versus the Colts. I don't the think coach, it's tough at all. Coach defense has been something crazy. I know you got Henry, you got AJ Brown, who has not been showing up. Uh, Julio, it's, it's, I'm going Colts. I'm going Colts. Great, because I'm going Tennessee. King yeah. Henry, MVP all the way. That's what's up. Game number three, my Miami Dolphins versus the Buffalo Bills. First of all, you already see the gear, so I'm going the Bills. Let's go. <laughs> I already know what's going on here. I'm not. Listen, I ain't stupid. <laughs> I meant you dumb, but I ain't stupid. Uh, next game on the docket is the Jets versus the Bengals. I'm also going Bengals as well. Joe Burrow is on a tear. And speaking of tear, I'm pretty sure they, they're quarterback with the Jets tore something in his arm. Um, let's he, see. Some, he, he tore something in his arm. We have a divisional matchup right now with the Steelers and the Browns. Mm. Mm. Half dead, half dead Roth, Roethlisberger, then a half dead uh, Cleveland roster. We eat that a win last week. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm go Browns. I'm gonna go Pittsburgh. Okay, here we go. We got we got a split there. We need those. We need those. All right. I mean, there's only a couple that we agreed on right now. Yeah. Um, and then we have Eagles versus Lions. The battle of the game that should not be locally televised in their city. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the yuck bowl right here. This, this is the whole bunch this of gross. Is, this is disgusting. But I'm, I'm gonna go with the Eagles. I actually am going to go Lions. So, like, this is okay, interesting. That's what's up. Um, Jalen Hurts has proven me wrong quite a couple of times, though. So, like, I'm not surprised by this. He's going to continue to do that. Black QB wave. Let's get on it. Uh, Rams versus Texans. Uh, Rams. That's easy. Yeah, it is easy. Give me the Rams. Yeah. Shout out to my little brother, Don Whitley. You know what I'm saying? Got to, you know, always been a Rams fan since the greatest show on turf. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, that's what's up. Then we have 49ers and Bears. Shout out to my man Pete Shores, Pythagoras. Hey, listen, man. Uh, like I said, black QB wave. I'm Ohio State fan, man. I feel like Justin Fields is going to get it together. I'm going Bears. I'm going 49ers because I feel like Justin Fields, he's been looking off. Well, it's not him. It's not the him. offensive line has been it's looking awful. It's not him. And it's just much fun. He's going to get right, but he ain't getting right this week. Definitely. New England Patriots versus the uh, Las Vegas Chargers? Los Angeles Chargers? LA Chargers. Chargers. Chargers and Pats. Who you got? Uh, it's a tough one because I really want the Pats to lose. My fantasy football league, um, but I also want the Chargers to lose because they're in the same division as, as my Raiders. But I mean, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real and I'm gonna go with the Chargers because he's a much more. I'm going with the Chargers as well. My boy Herbert the pervert and my man the um, Austin Eckler because <laughs> you know X gonna give it to you. Stop <laughs> you know what doing saying? that. Stop uh, doing we got Jaguars and Seahawks. Another Dookie ball in here. Yeah, I'm going up. Young Gino? Yeah, oh, man, this is a tough one. Who do I believe in more? Scrummer Lords. Ball, and if you could just, if you, listen, you can toss the ball with DK Metcalf. They or, haven't been, though. Or, or Tyler Lockett. Like, if you, like, he has to get it together. He has to, he will get it together. I just don't believe that uh, sunshine over there. <laughs> and also, not his fault as well. Like, That's the offensive line is, is hazardous. Yeah. And it's like he's been forced to make a lot of passes, whatever. But I'm also going to go Hawks as well. Yeah. I'm believing the Young Geno project. Yeah. Uh, then we got Bucks and Saints. 
Tampa, mm. Tampa Tom. But it's also a, a what's called Jameis Winston revenge game. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't believe in these Saints I mean, at it's all. It's Black QB wave, but like, like Jameis is just. I don't it's know like Black QB wave, except for Jameis. Is that what you trying to say? No, because week one, he went, he went crazy, and it's just like he's like trying to make up for Matt doing good the rest of these weeks to make up for how good he did week one. So I don't know what's going on with Jameis, man. Um, we got Washington football team and the Denver Broncos. Ugh. Again, another divisional team that I want to lose. I'm going Washington football, man. Heineke ain't been looking that bad, man. Give me the Broncos, man. I believe in my man Teddy two times. Teddy yeah, yeah. I they got uh, Jerry Judy's back this week, and like I got him on a but I had him on IR. This week? He's like, he's I didn't like, know that. He's, the, he's been on the IR and all my fantasy oh, teams, so I'm like, I'm looking at it. Oh, I didn't know. Do you want to change your pick? I'm gonna give you five seconds right now to change your pick. Yeah, I'm changing my pick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, because Jerry Judy, that's it. That's how much we believe it. Yeah, man. The Sunday night primetime game, we have the Dallas Cowboys versus the Minnesota Vikings. It's a good. It's gonna be a good one. Well, it's he's questionable right now. Right now, Dak uh, Prescott is questionable. Um, he's legit a game time decision for tonight. So what you thinking? Prime time. It's a big game. Even if even if Dak doesn't play, they still got Zeke Elliott, Tony Pollard, C.D. Lamb. You know what I mean? Dalton Schultz has been yeah, one of the top a lot of guys who catch the ball. Really hey, you throw the ball to him. I'm going I don't even know who the Cowboys' backup quarterback is. I don't either. I'm going Cam, Vikings. Cam, Cam, yeah. call my man. So what is he doing? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Are you going with the Cowboys? No, I'm going with the Vikings. I was really trying to go, Judy, to go to the Cowboys because I'm going Vikings as <laughs> well. I was trying. I was like, yo, Zeke Elliott, man. I was yeah, like, no, Dalvin no, Cook, nice. Justin Jefferson, nice. Adam Thielen. Nice. Uh, yeah, sign me up for that. And then the Monday night football game, we have the Kansas City Chiefs versus the New York Giants. So the team that was the Chiefs is the team that was the Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> no Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is out. I believe Kenny Galladay is always out. So, like, he's also out as well. Chiefs as well. This is well. This is going to be a tight one. We have, like, a lot of them, like, we kind of agree on. But it's going to be it's going to be close. But, like, I could already taste that medium rare, you know, New York strip, like, on the tip of my tongue. You know? <laughs> I might even order a meal to go home, even though I'm not going to eat it. Like, just give me two of what I'm ordering. And two soda. And two soda. Can I take a soda home? That's all right. You sure you don't want to bet rent? You don't want to do that? No, nah, no, nah, I'm all set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you got it, I'm all set. I'm all set. I'm all set. <laughs> but what you call it? Um, I, like I said, I'm repping the set. It's Sunday. You've not repping the set. Is it because your guys aren't playing this week? Um, I'm Raiders talking, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. My Raiders is off this week. My Raiders is off this week, but we are five and two right now. I'm super hyped. Uh, two wins coming off a couple losses after the John Gruden era. You know what I mean? Their their cars looking like he's settling in, getting a little comfortable, man. If Darren Waller could stay healthy, like yes. that's a big piece that's like and, just not being there. And Josh Jacobs. And yeah, Josh Jacobs. I don't know what's up with that brother, man. Like he's I don't either, but that boy Drizzy is like, hey, listen, bro. You stay out as long as you want to, man. I got you. <laughs> so you must be on an all-time high right now, though, because like your other squad over over there in the metropolitan area, the Mecca of basketball, the New York Knicks are five, <laughs> somehow five and one. Shout out to my homie. I don't know if you want me to use his name yet, but you know he ain't responded in the chat. But he's definitely a Bulls fan. You know who I'm talking to right now. He was I feel like Julius Randle was trying to shade points again. I don't know what's going on there, Jules. I mean, it needs to get together, man. But long story short, Knicks up by one. Jules is two. Two free throws by one. Comes down to uh, DeMar DeRozan. Good look. He misses because he was right outside of that mid-range. You need to learn how to shoot a three, boy. I ain't worried about it, though. He missed that joint. We go to five and one. The only team ahead of us in the Eastern Conference is the Wizards. We're at six and one. And I feel like we have a better team than them. I feel like we have better team than the Knicks is looking really good right now. I'm hyped. I don't care what happens over the next 20 games. I'm riding this wave. I see some faces over here. If you want to talk about the Pistons, we can. I'm just saying. I'd rather not. I, all, I'd right. Rather not. all right. So we can continue to talk it. about the Knicks. I was going to say, I call this like a hibernation season. It's like, you know, we bide in our time. Listen. Yeah, we like Goku in the in the hyperbolic time chamber. Listen. Like, we just watch call it. We try to get right. It's a, like, I'm not. I'm Tim, not mad at all. Tim's got these boys playing defense. Really, the defense that's getting it done, but like the offensive 
explosions that we're having from guys who were doing this a year or two ago. I know I brought up Obi Toppin last week. Um, RJ Barrett is knocking down the three like he had never did. In I've always believed in RJ. I always believe in RJ too. I always wanted him to extend his game, and he has done just that. Mitchell Robinson, like I said, threw on 30, 40 pounds of muscle, and that brother is getting up and down the court, blocking shots, catching alleys. D Rose is D Rose. Like he looks like a reinvented uh, uh, vet. Like, you know, you see those guys who get a little older, so they like, I got to do a little more than what I used to do. And like he's getting into the lane, he's facilitating, he's breaking down defenses, he's knocking down the three. Kimba's knocking down the three. Four years knocking down the three. Do I need to go on? Like this is yeah, is crazy, this, right? Is now. this your favorite like two thousands Knicks team? Like counting the Carmelo teams and stuff like that. Like is this say, like uh, your favorite? Team? I know this is quite. I mean, like as of right now, it's the best. Like you know, to be besides like that playoff Melo team. Is this your favorite though? I, I, got, I got to give it some time. I got to give it some time because the mellow era was really, really, you know, really close to me. And like, yeah, it was really up and down, but it's still, I, I love what happened. Like a lot of people wasn't. It was exciting basketball. Yeah, J.R. Smith, yeah. Carmelo like, Anthony, New York was getting put on the back burner and people wasn't checking for the Knicks like that. And then the whole Brooklyn wave started and everybody was slowly saying that was the team of New York. You know what I mean? So um, also I can't forget all respect. You know, the J train, you know what I mean? When Amari came over. Because that's what I was going to say. It's like, personally, my yeah, Amari, favorite. The Amari area was, that was dope for me. That was dope for me. Even though it was only like half a season. I don't care. That half a season felt way better than the whole season before he got there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, kudos to Amari because between him having his era, whether it was short-lived or not, and then Melo picking up the steam after that, like, it kept New York relevant. And here we are. It was like that. What was it? It was Raymond Felton, Wilson Chandler, Danilo Gallinari, Amari Stoudemire. Uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody like pretty big, but it was like they were just solid. Mm -hmm. And it was like they were running and gunning. And that was like mm -hmm. I, Amari was up there for MVP. And it was like then they make the big move for Melo, bring Melo over. And it's like they just don't gel 100%. Yeah. Then Amari gets hurt and, and, and it just hyped. never gets. It yeah, was like I was hyped. Man. I it was, was rough. Hyped. And it was like they got Chauncey Billups in there too, which was like a bigger throw in yeah, like at the time. Hyped. Couldn't tell me that then, though. You couldn't tell me that then. I can't wait to get back to the time uh, as a Pistons fan, like having a, an exciting Pistons team. Like, I'm just, hey, you mean we had a championship team, though? Like, regardless of what you feel about, like, these last couple of times, it's like, you you trying to tell me that you wouldn't trade all of these other Knicks seasons to have the Ben Wallace, right, Rasheed Wallace, Chauncey right, Bellows, Rip Hamilton, Tayshaun Prince. I'm going to answer your question. And everyone else's question, once your team is five to ten years removed from that ring. Stop bringing it up. I'm tired of hearing, at least I've seen my team win in my decade. All right, Janet Jackson had a really good song. Yeah, hey, she's still one of the greatest artists of all time. You can't take that away from her. What have you done for me lately? Ooh, Ooh yeah, yeah. Nothing for me. She had a song in, two, in the 2000s, though. So. so for you. Don't play it. The Velvet Rope was in like no, 1999. No, no, what I'm saying is this is not something derogatory to Janet. What I'm saying is that's what I'm saying to y'all. Stop bringing up all this whack stuff of y'all old championships. Congratulations. We are past that. But like just well, what I'm saying is like that is still your legacy. Like granted, yeah, yes. And that's yeah, the thing, is, yeah, and that's we, the thing with different with, with new fans now is like fans hopping team to team to team to team. And it's different. It's like when you're loyal, it's like that stuff matters. Like I was there for that. Mm -hmm. I was there mm -hmm. before they got mm -hmm. before they were good. Mm -hmm. Then they were good. Mm -hmm. Then they win. It's like that's what you call. That's no, how I like. That's what's up. We just ain't talking legacy. We talking legacy. I know you I don't know, know, know what that feels like. I'm just saying, like that's what it's like. That's what I'm saying. It's like you weren't there. It's like it's different. It's still part of the legacy. I I wish that you it could feel, like I could transfer. You could feel what I feel. I wish that I could give that to you, but I can't. Okay. Yeah, we can always go college football and talk about Florida State versus Ohio State. I mean, we, won't do do that. Do that. we won't do that. We won't do that. We won't do that. All right. We, there's several different areas we can go into. All right. But I'm tired to talk about these next. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll transition into our popcorn pleasures. Yes, that's what we're calling them. Popcorn pleasures. We know our, our homie Big Nasty is the uh, the movie connoisseur. All right. So I was really sure of a popcorn poppy, but he refused. All right, viewers, let us know in the comment sections. Is it popcorn pleasures or popcorn poppy? <laughs> it says it says the decider. You know? the right comment, like you
or he might just send you some eggplant emojis. <laughs> so, so you might want to be careful. <laughs> Stop. 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 All right. So I know there were a couple movies that you were going to see recently. Hopefully we get to talk about them Wednesday on the pod. But I know one of the first ones was the Halloween movie. I still did not get a chance to see it. Um, we, we did record on Wednesday. And like a lot of stuff, like obviously took place Halloween weekend, stuff like that. Um, and what happens is I did go see the My Hero Academia uh, movie, uh, okay. My, Hero, My Hero Mission. Um, but the thing is with anime movies is like they don't get released like regular movies. So like okay. when it gets released this weekend, like that doesn't mean it stays there for a month. Like they're only there for that weekend. Oh, so wow. it's like I had to go in there and see it because it's like if I miss it now, it's like I got to watch it on TV stuff like that so like i made it a priority to go watch this but i will be watching dune and i will be watching halloween before the next um pod so that way like i can give like my taste on that um, so we can double back to the my hero academia i am not going to see halloween i know i said it, it but i am going to see dune because it has for me from seeing it see some more there you go okay. all right and um um it looks pretty cool so and i think i give something to talk about on wednesday I, i'm you know I, I didn't know this was a remake yeah it was I an think, 80s movie. We talked about it last time. I okay. know. Like, I'm bringing it back up. I did not know this was a remake. It was news to me when you brought it up before. I'm not going to watch the remake. But... It's, it's, you don't really have to. Okay. Like, it was a good movie, but it's like, there's a lot. And it's like, it's long as hell. It's like two hours and 45 minutes, I oh, think. No. And it's like, it's two hours and 45 minutes of an 80s movie. No. Like that. It's no. an 80s sci fi movie. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. So, um, I have seen, or not seen, but heard some of uh, the Hero Academia. A lot of the kids that I work with talk about it a lot. And my son is really big on anime. Uh, so Trail gave me a, this is what, what a real dad looks like, uh, Hero Academia sticker, and it's got the dude All Might on it. I guess he's like I'm one, all of, might. one of the main characters. Yes. Uh, and we did watch it. The we symbol of one, peace. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's what, that's what Trail says. But we were having <laughs> like a father son moment, and he was like watching the episode. So I watched it with him, and it was like, a bunch of fighters getting owned like in a stadium by a villain and then the dude all oh, might showed up and was just like i got a smack for you and i got a smack for you and he was just oh, going in big daddy energy <laughs> like i heard you guys were picking on my son like and everybody's catching these hands <laughs> oh it's a it's a real like it's a real deep voice and it's so he like like his whole point of his character is like he's like the they call him like the symbol of peace like he is the superhero. It's okay. like that's the kid everybody, the superhero everybody looks up to. Like okay. he always comes with like a smile on his face, big boisterous voice, and he's like you know stuff like that. So like when he shows up, like you feel like the characters do because you're like yo, all my here, like my guys here. And it's like he put, <laughs> and he starts putting paws on people, and you just like yes, okay. But it's like you need to watch the show because like you know like obviously he takes a journey like as well as everybody in it. But if you're unfamiliar with my hero, I think yes, yeah, so, so, uh, in general, it is uh, what you call it an anime. <laughs> um, like most animes, all the episodes are half an hour. There are it just completed its fifth season. Every season has about twenty-two to twenty-five episodes. So it's like it's a hundred episodes, but it's like they're twenty minutes each. So it's like you can breeze through them. Um, but what it's about is like they are born into a world where people are born with superpowers. Okay. Um, I believe it's like sixty percent of the world's population is born with powers. They are known as quirks, and it's like they can uh, range from like very different things. Like there's a guy who sweat, like he sweats nitroglycerin. So like he uses that to make like explosions. Then there's also people who are just born. Yeah, so like you get super dope stuff. And then there's some people who are like, my power is like, I glow. And so like that. And it's like, you know, I'll tell you, like there's a top of the tub and there's a bottom of the barrel. And what happens is like, yeah. And there's people who are, there's people who are legit just animals. Like my power is like, I'm a dog. Like I have the head of a dog. And it's like, it's, uh -huh. and it's like some of the funny parts about the show. Cause like you watch it and you're like, man, it would suck to be this guy right. and stuff like that. But like, well, um, I think the whole point of the show is, uh, so like they're all kids, like they're teenagers and they go to the school to teach them how to be actual heroes oh, okay. uh, and stuff like that. So like they, like you come in there with your ability but they really teach you like how to hone your ability and they let you know that like you get sorted into classes. It's like, you know what, you have like a support ability, mm -hmm. like you can heal people. So like you should really be like in this course so that way you can learn how to do these things you have real sidekick energy or like you are good at like there's this one character he in his elbows he's literally like a tape dispenser but he what? no i'm telling you it sounds dumb but it's like he has like an unlimited amount of like this long tape and it's like a, a very strong adhesive so like what you're good at is like you can wrap up a bunch of villains like you know way better than waking up with a dog face 
<laughs> I'm, t- I'm telling you, bro. Like, like it's crazy. Um, yeah. but the, our main hero is um, his name is Izuku Midoriya. Um, oh, not the All Might. The All Might is not the main character. So Izuku Midoriya is a person who was born without a quirk. Um, yes, he's a, so he's a regular person. Um, but he always wanted to be a hero, and he idolizes All Might. I don't think that this is a spoiler, but like I'll do like this in case you don't want to spoil or whatever. But like the whole thing is like he runs into All Might, and you find out that All Might's power is it's a power that transfers from person to person to person. And what he's always looking for is the who should be the next person to inherit his quirk. And like he sees a lot of qualities in Midoriya that he'd be like, you would be a super dope person to inherit this quirk. So it's like this journey to see if he's like worthy to what you call it, to uh, inherit the, uh, it's called all for one, uh, quirk and stuff like that. Um, one for all, I'm sorry, the bad guy is, is all for one. Um, it's one, um, all for one, and it's it's super dope, but the movie itself, so like there are three My Hero Academia movies. Okay. Um, and the thing is like in anime, like a lot of the times when they make a movie, they're called, they're not canon. So like they don't really have to do with what's going on in the show. Like if you used to watch like Dragon Ball Z movies, mm-hmm. like with things like Broly and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. they're, they never really take place in the story. And that's why like right. so many things don't make sense. You're like, why is this person Super Saiyan? And da, 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 or whatever, it's because they're not canon. My hero movies are actually, all of them are canon. Um, so they're they're almost like side missions that are like an hour and a half, and they do have ramifications going into the new season and stuff I, like that. I might not be able to catch up on this. this sounds like a lot of fire. It is a it is a lot of stuff, but it's like if you are into like X Men, it really is like anime mm-hmm. X Men. Like you just think about that. It's like you know like some people can shoot lasers out their eyes, and like some people like I look like a bird, and it's like it sucks, and it's like you know, but like I have to deal with that and stuff like that, and it's like. What's your superpower? Got these feet, right? <laughs> but, but, like you'd be surprised. There's one dude. His power is gecko, and he just looks like a gecko. No, and it's like, yeah, this no, is, no, sucks. No, I'm not coming across. That. I'm not coming across. Today. I'm yeah, but like, yo, what's called? It's a great show. The movie. Um, if I were to put it on my scale, which my scale is full price matinee, five dollar Tuesday, red box, wow. and then streaming, wow. I would put it at a full price, especially if you watch the show. So mm-hmm. like I would definitely put it on full price. It was great. Um, I do think that the second movie is the best one so far. So I think this was a worthy addition and probably the second best movie that we've done. Well said. Well said. All right. So from there, we'll transition into a couple movies that we're looking forward to see. I watched yep. a couple of trailers that were super exciting for me. Yep. Um, the first one is Lightyear. So for us who have children and have watched Toy Story before, we know who Buzz, Buzz, Buzz Lightyear to the rescue is, right? So, <laughs> so infinity and beyond. Like, yeah, that's, 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 that's not bad. You actually got a couple of Buzz Lightyear. I think I got a lot of chins going on. One of them, <laughs> one of them might be Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> 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 like, uh, this one, not, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so um, I always love when movies come out that are not only interesting and fun and funny, but you know, I get to bring the boys to and we get to kick it and like those are the real theater attractions for me when I get to go and kick it with my sons but um it's basically like the real life story of the toy of Buzz Lightyear and the toy is based off of this actual uh, person yes there you go so this actual person is like actually goes into space just watch the trailer when you get an opportunity but it looks action-packed but yet still caring and it, like it builds that family atmosphere it looks pretty interesting pretty fun no, but, um, what you call it? I I saw the trailer and at first, like I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, like the animation is cool, like this looks all right. But then when he hits the two infinity at the end, I was like, take my money, take my money. Oh, yeah. I'm watching this movie. Oh, I'm watching yeah. this movie. Oh yeah, that's all there really is to it. It's like oh, yeah. I'm watching this. Like that's oh, and yeah. I'll be all. Like if I could buy my ticket now, like I would. I'm in there. Take that. All right. Um, the next one I'm really looking forward to, like really, really looking forward to, is the harder they fall. It sounds familiar. Which one's the harder they fall? It's, uh, I watch a lot of trailers. Though. No, no, I get it. This is definitely the Black Cowboy scene, like like the major Black Cowboy scene. The now, Netflix movie. It's going to be on Netflix. Okay, yep, it I has, do know what you're talking about. It has uh, Stringer Bell from The Wire in it. Idris Elba. Okay, it has Shirley from Poetic Justice that was dating in Chicago. Uh, Regina King. Reg- she does Jones. the voice of uh, Huey on the Boondocks. Yes. And Riley. And, and Riley. Riley. And yeah. is a co-writer, I believe, as well. She's also the writer of The Watchmen, which is probably like my favorite show of the last okay. year. You guys should definitely right. watch that. Shout one. out to she's Regina awesome. if you want to come on. She's, the show. Just, she's just crushing it in general. Right. In life, if you so. want to come on the show, let us know. <laughs> you know, we'll make a next. Uh, this could be your show. show. We're gonna have you just. We'll be your guest. <laughs> 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 um, it has uh, friend from Anna on it. Oh, Anna. Yeah, 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 Anna. Yeah,
the main character. Skinny one. The skinny one. Uh, he Lakeith also, Sinfield. Yes, he was in Get Out with the hat on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. And it has um old boy from um Lovecraft Country. Uh Jonathan Majors. Yes. Who's playing a big role in the MCU. So you might want to get he is. You, like, he's, he's hot right now. You might want to get a bar. He's definitely get landed some main roles. And crushing them. And, and crushing them. That's understatement. Up. Understatement. But yeah, basically the premise of the story is like um Idris Alba's character has been locked up for like some heinous crimes. And Regina King and a few other people are like this black mafia cowboy gang that break him out of prison. And from there, they're going on a rampage and just letting people know it is what it is. And um, the old boy from Lovecraft. Country, okay. Or I, I was calling him by his name in Lovecraft. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Majors. Jonathan Majors is like the guy who's trying to stop them from doing what they're doing. Like, um, there's a backstory on why he wants to stop them. And it's like, it, it looks like a really good movie. Um, it is. Produced by Jay Z. Huh. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's like the main producer, executive producer, but I do know that his name pops up as like part of like getting this this story, this movie out there on Netflix. Um, I'm super excited about it. It looks pretty dope. That's not Carter's in there, so I'm like, yep. So like, I'm like, oh, Idris Elba, sign me up. Wait, right. Regina King, sign me up. Jonathan Majors, sign me up. Right. Like, Sample, Jay Z. I, I will see this movie. I'm going right. like, right. Um, do we have a what's it called? Do we have a date for that? Like, I'm, when it actually I'm does come out? It right now. Because, like, yeah, like I said, like, Jonathan Majors, like, he's on fire right now. Idris Elba, like, he hasn't missed. He was great in uh, Suicide Squad uh, and a character that nobody cared about and stuff like that. And, like, he was in that cowboy movie that you were talking about that I'm definitely not watching. But I was like, as soon as I saw Re Regina King in it, I was like, oh, Regina King's in something? Sign me up. Supposedly it came out on the 22nd. Wait, that wait, wait, wait. You're telling me it was already out? Can be true. I'm going to find out. Are you really about to go on Netflix like right now to see if it's on there? Yes. Because like that might be what I wind up watching tonight. That's what I'm doing this afternoon. Um, oh, you're not you're not gonna watch uh, the Cowboys and in Vikings? I can watch one on my phone. Well, you one of those. I don't I don't got that that type of multitasking in me. But if that joint is already out, then consider that another movie I'm also gonna watch before the next pod. Because it's like that's definitely going down. Is it out? Um, it's coming out Wednesday. This Wednesday. Okay, so be after this pod. So we'll both watch this. So that way for so the Wednesday Sunday pod, pod, we will watch it that night. Well, yep, the weekend pod we'll be able to talk about. It. Well, we're gonna be recording that Wednesday, so we probably won't be able to watch it that day. But like, yeah, send the next uh, weekend pod. We'll be able to get that one out there for you. Um, but we'll turn the tables now to Insomnia Hour, like our little tip. This is what we're calling our little TV segment. Mm -hmm. This is what we are now. All these, all these names is being workshop. If you have any suggestions out there, yo, throw them up. Like, yo, some of these Chris Paul alley is going to go out of bounds, but some of them might be Blake Griffin slam dunks, and they going in there. So throw them all out here. Uh, what are you watching? Um, so tonight, I'm going to watch the Colin Kaepernick. Okay. He has a I've heard movie. amazing reviews. Yes, I haven't got a chance to watch that. I have also heard amazing reviews. I'm going to watch it tonight. Um, I recently knocked off uh, a couple last season, not season finales, series finales. Okay. The okay. last finales of these shows. Um, the first one was on my block. Um, I, you yeah, kept on watching that though? I, so I have this problem, right? When I start watching something, I have to see it through because I'm a big advocate of like, I can't start something and not finish it. Yeah. Um, aside from The Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> we, there is literally everybody has a story of the day they stopped watching The yes, Walking Dead. And exactly. the fact that it's still on TV, yeah. I don't understand what's going on. I don't either. But yeah, the, the, last, the last season was like, I literally only watched it because this was the end of the madness. Which and the I final watched, episode, like the final five to ten minutes, like was pretty satisfactory. And it was like, just leave it there. When I heard that the new season was coming out, and I was like, why? Yes. Why? I feel like somebody owes me my life. So you did finish it? I watched every episode. You are just a glutton for punishment. Yes. Raiders fan, Knicks fan, <laughs> watching on my mind. Just like, just like, yeah. just, yeah. just kidding. But, but this season, they don't record them. All right. It's There's still very early on. Trash and two other All right. So, but it was that it was that bad. So it's not worth anybody's time to watch. Uh, I would say you're not going to miss anything about it. Thank you. Thank something. you for biting that bullet for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. The other one is um, dear white people. Okay. Um, I started that at one point and never finished it. Um, I think it was just one of those things where like a lot of things came out mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's like it just kind of got thrown underneath. I always wanted to get back into it. It's, it's, for me, I would say it's worth it. Okay, cool. I will let you know that um, the first couple episodes, I won't say that they drag, but you're kind of like, 
all right, is this where we're going with this? Because it's completely different of what um, the last season was. But I feel like the creators, the producers, the directors wanted to make sure that this being the series finale, like they- Oh, it's done done. Yeah, it's done done. Okay. So they went into a completely different, um, like, way of viewing the show. And, like, it's- Spoiler alert. Well, it's not a spoiler no, no. alert. Actually, but... can you give like a quick synopsis? Because like I'm having a hard time. I'm like, I remember yes. they were in college. Yes, that's What's the point. So this is so for those who haven't watched Dear White People, I apologize. It's on Netflix. Um, and it's a group of college students, and it's basically um their day by day living of being on a campus where black people aren't positively represented, but like their interactions with each other, their interactions with um, other races, like there are white people on the show that they get along with, don't get along with. Um, it's not like a overly aggressive racial show, mm-hmm. but they do touch on some points, but they don't make it to the point to where it's hard to watch. Like okay. it's something that everybody can watch and have good conversations based on the content that they provide. And then um, uh, and each year, it goes by, things become more intense or less intense, relationships get built. It's all based around this one college student who has a radio show where she's addressing white people on college campus all day, every day. And the, show, the, the name show of her show white is called Dear White People. And the interactions from the show that she has on the radio station trickles out into like her real campus life and her interactions with her friends and stuff. I thought it was it was very refreshing. And for those who are young students, college students, this may be stuff that you're actually going through. This kind of serves as a roadmap of some of the things you will possibly have to navigate or go through within your time being as a college student. Um, what I like most about the last episode, I mean, the last series, was it's them as adults recalling those college years. And oh, so they're in the workforce now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, somewhat, like, it seems like they're all successful in whatever it is that they have done after their college years. But they're using this last series to recall the first three seasons, I believe it was, okay. of all those events and some of the things that were untold, they're telling them as adults. So three, three seasons of the show? How many episodes per season? Ten, I want to say. Half an hour? Because like I remember like I like the first couple episodes I like, kind of breezed through. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're half an hour. They're not they're not long watches. And um it's you know, it's it's easy to get through. Yeah. I remember like it kind of dealt with like, you know, like because like her frustrations that she voices on the radio show are like, you know, the microaggressions mm-hmm. and like, you know, like a, just a lot of like the things that, you know, just black people, minorities generally were just tired of. Right. And it's just like, you know, like it's it's it is refreshing to see someone say that because like I feel like we're kind of taught to be more of just like, yo, just let it go. Ignore it mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like it's nice to see somebody like take a stand and say something on it. Um so what's it called? I think I'm gonna get back into it. three seasons is like, especially a half an hour. Yeah, like yeah. I'm pretty sure I could do it. And the last one, like I said, they went in a, or the last season, they went in a completely different direction. Like I said, as they're recalling their college years, they're clearing up a lot of stuff that we didn't know what happened. Okay. And there's some major stuff that happened in the last season that they'll also tell you about. And the entire season is a musical. Yes, not, well, not the entire thing, but some of the parts. You're losing me. No, no. You're no, losing no. me. Watch me reel you back in now. Please do. All right, because I know you're a fond man of the arts. I all do. right. I do. They are using current music. They're using music from the early 90s. And some of the songs that I'm they're back using. In. Back in. Some of the songs that they're using to act out some of the scenes are like pretty prolific. All right. It was I, I thought it was pretty dope the way they did it, because not only did they get through the story and still send messages, but they also were paying homage to a lot of people. Oh. So it was pretty dope for me. I was say, when you said musical, the first thing that popped up to my head, I don't know if you remember MTV's Hip Hop Era. They did Carmen with Beyonce. That's your girl though. And that's what I thought what route we were going. And I was like, I am out of here. Or like, what was the new musical that Lin- Lin- Lin-Manuel Miranda just did with the, what's it called, with the Puerto Rican, in Puerto Ricans in New York. The, into the Heights. Oh, yes. I haven't seen that one. But like, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not here for it. Like, I like musicals. I don't like them like that. Like, once once I saw uh, Dr. Dre from Straight Outta Compton singing in that morning, like, morning, Guzla. I was like, nah, I'm all set. I'm not watching yeah, this. I'm all set. I'm all set. But yes, it's four seasons, 10 episodes a season, like 30 minute episodes. So maybe 30 it, easily seasons. digestible. Yes. To be done. I, on the other hand, I'm watching. Um, uh, my half an hour show has been Young Justice, 
um, which if you are also unfamiliar, it's on HBO Max. It is a DC animated show um, and it follows the sidekicks of DC heroes. So like it deals with uh, Robin, um, Green Arrow's uh, partner Speedy, or it's Artemis in this one, um, but like actually Speedy actually is in it. Um, Aqualad, uh, Kid Flash, like they're all in it and it's like, you know, their journeys from like trying to be like their own superheroes and leave um, the main hero's shadow. Mm -hmm. It is on its fourth season now. Um, I don't know if it's the final season because like the thing is like the show has been canceled like three different times. It's been brought back by all these different networks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, now they're like older, older. Like Robin is now transitioned into Nightwing mm -hmm. and something like that like some characters have passed on and stuff like that. And like the last season really opened up the universe because now they're into, they're dealing with uh, cosmic things like dark side and things of that nature. Okay. Um, one of the main characters or the two of the main characters are Superboy, the clone of Superman, uh, Connor Kent, and then uh, Miss Martian who is the, the niece of John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Wow. And it's like, they're actually in a relationship and like the first, um, so only the first four episodes are out right now, mm -hmm. which I plowed right through those. Um, but they are actually a couple and it deals with like them getting married. And it's like, they're both aliens, but they're not the same type of aliens. And it's like the different prejudices like they have to go through. And I was like, oh, we going down this road with Young Justice? I was like, sign me up. So okay. like, that's been a super solid one. Um, the other show that I have on my docket that I have not gotten to yet um, is Insecure. And it's like, do you have you ever watched Insecure? No, I have not. This is the That's what Issa Rae. Yes, yes. Do you know who Issa Rae? I, like, I know who Issa Rae is. I can't say she was in this joint because I only know her from Insecure. I know she's had some cameos and other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Can't remember she's a name. very big, like prolific writer yep. in what you call it, and their stuff like that. And it's like being a black female writer. And it's like this Her show gets brought up a lot a and lot. other people's stuff. Yes. Yeah. But she's like, when I tell you, knock it out of the park. And I know, like, uh, Ted, it, it is on HBO Max. Okay. Um, I believe only the first two episodes are out right now because, like, she didn't put it all out. Mm -hmm. um, new episodes are every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, Sunday. So, like, today is like the, the second episode is out. Those are hour long episodes, um, but like each season is only like 10 episodes, but like what the real like meat of the show is, is just like relationships. And okay. like, you know, like you have relationships with your friends, you have relationships with your parents, you have relationships with um, obviously your significant other. And it's just like navigating these relationships as like a 20 something year old. And it's like, you're still trying to figure out who you yourself are. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the writing is superb, the acting is superb. And it's like, it really, really sucks. Um, that this is the final season because like they've announced it before like I've seen clips of them recording and they're crying and I'm just like man like it's such a great big series like, if you're a fan of Atlanta the Donald Glover show um, like while I don't think it 100% correlates over but I think if you enjoy that show like then this one should be very easily digestible for you okay. um, it's really really good really really well done and it's like you'll see yourself in certain characters because you're like man this is who I was like in my 20s like this makes sense because like everybody gets covered and it's just like they're in LA so it's like there's a lot of like LA things to deal with because it's like there's a lot of cameos from like famous people being famous people like I believe like Young Thug was on an episode like at one point in time um I can't I don't really have anybody else at the top of my head but like Insecure like definitely check that one out okay all right and I think the last one that we'll end with only because I'm a little disappointed you know my birthday coming up soon I'm in November I was looking forward to season two of Invincible. Ooh, and it yeah. turns out it's not going to get released in November. Um, it just came to me. I looked it up. I was like, I think that's coming out this November. It's not coming out this November. I'm not sure why. Why the creators push it back. It's not like you have real life people in there. It's all cartoons. But um, for those who haven't watched it, Invincible is like uh, a superhero story. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, you could watch it on other sites, but you know, you know me. <laughs> but uh, it's basically about a dad who's like a superhero, but he's actually he is the super. Oh, whoa, 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 bro! Super. Whoa, whoa. Strongest person. Okay, relax. Chill out. <laughs> Yo, you were by you. Whoa. Okay. And, um, And then one day, 
Boom, his son has his powers, and like he's been teaching him how to use his powers, and he has friends who have powers, and they're like the younger group that will replace the older group of superheroes. And in between that, there's a lot of family content. Him and his father don't get along for a number of different reasons that you can see on the show if you decide to watch it. I don't want to spoil it for anyone that decides to check it out, but um, I will tell you that this show has a lot of cliffhangers, a lot of curveballs, and what you think will usually happen in a superhero show does not happen in this superhero show. Be careful, bro. Be careful. Yeah, it's hard to tell you how good the show is without ruining the show. Fantastic show. Like if there if there was like a ranking for it, which don't have full price. Yeah. Well, bro, like I can't wait for the show to come back out yeah. either. Definitely yeah. a full price. I'm up. not sure why it's not dropping in November. I'm not sure why. Dude, have you, I'm assuming you haven't read the comics either. No, because it's like it's not a beat by beat uh, copy from the comics, but it's like it's very close. And it's like the comics are fantastic mm-hmm. and it's stuff like that. So like, I know where the show is going and I'm like, wow, if people really, really like season one. Like y'all are going to be in for some stuff. Yeah. Like, y'all going to be in for some stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I can't wait. Like I watch it with my brother and like every time like I know something's coming, I'm just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and then like, I watch his face, he's like, oh, and I was like, yeah, I was like, I tell you. Another thing that we got That's the last time we were just like, all right, we out. See you later. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're not, you know, we're not leaving y'all um, hanging out there with just uh, this back goodbye and slamming the door in your face like Martin when he's telling everybody to get the step in, all right? <laughs> so we want to make sure we have those little tidbits of outros and making sure that, um, you know, we're segueing in, in the right way. So we are coming to the end of this segment. But before we do that, do you have anything pressing or important going on in your life you want to talk about? Um, nothing really. I did just kind of want to do like just a bit of housekeeping to, okay. for, to what to look forward to for the next episode. Like I said, we're going to be doing our reviews of Dune okay. um, and of the Halloween movie. Um, also, uh, I, I, I dug into the crates because I knew it was there. And it's like I wound up finding like my old emails um, that I had. It wasn't on John Gruden's stuff. Like, 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 hey, listen, <laughs> listen, if they ever decide to go through my emails, it's not going to be that type of stuff, but it's like they might have me out there too. Let me figure out. I'm just saying. Um, but no, um, so like I had mentioned before when we were talking about the 75 greatest players of all time list, is like I had actually made a precursor list for it and I'm going to update it. Okay. And um, for the next episode, like we're going to go through, we're going to give like who our next 25 uh, people should be. Because like what I also didn't realize is. Um, so we were saying like, oh, just keep the original 50 and keep it moving. But like at the same time, the original 50 still got chosen like on the list. So like all the people that were on the 50 greatest time list, like they made this list and it was like, there were just 20, 25 other people. What do you mean? It makes no sense. We're going to go into this. We're going to get into this next time. Um, but we're actually going to go, going to go through it and we're going to do our picks for, um, the 25 people that we believe actually should have been the extra people on it, we're going to go under the rules um, that the players who are on the 50 greatest time list like just get to remain, and it is 25 extra players um, from there. It is going to be tough, and like that's gonna, and I think that's what's going to make for great content. So like that's going to be the next thing um, on there. I don't think I had anything important or anything going on. Um, obviously, go fins, even though like I think it's looking pretty slim <laughs> on there. It's like that, but it's just like, hey, like, man, I got, I got a hopeful outlook. But it's like, that's all I really have. Um, anything else about you want to plug or say? The big 4 0 coming this Friday. Oof. The big 4 0 oh. coming this Friday. Any plans? Yeah, I got a whole lot of plans. I got a whole lot of plans. Um, Any that you care to share? Yeah, I'll share. Uh, um, Friday, I'll be hanging out with my wife. We don't, wanna, we don't know what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no more children coming, if that's what you're wondering. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we definitely will be grown folks on that day. Hey, listen, your presence is gift and not. Say less. Right. Sam God's gift. I do have a cash app. <laughs> That's what the rent is for. <laughs> That's where that goes. But yeah, so um Saturday I'm gonna have a little get together, some family, some friends. Um and then Sunday, uh, me and my brother are gonna scout to uh, a 
York, who watched the Raiders play the Giants. Uh, you know, that should look like a scrimmage. But <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my homie because the same one who's a Bulls fan is a Giants fan. So, what time is that game at next week? Good question. Because I'm wondering when when are we going to give them that episode? Well, we'll I mean, we'll have that off uh, yeah, set yeah, for the yeah, Wednesday pod yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. We'll yeah, let them know. Definitely. You know. Uh, what what would change is probably on that Sunday pod. It's going to be a split screen because we'll probably I'll be one place, as well, I'll be another place. But we still got to make sure we get that content. Of course. Right. But um, other than that, man, you know I'm just excited. You know, um, I always try to drop a little nugget at the end. Um, would you call this one like Reason's Coffin's Corner? Coffin Corner? Why not just Coach's Corner? Like why are you allowed to call Coach's it? Corner? We can call it Coach's Reason's Corner. Coach's I like Coach's Corner, Corner too. All right, but um, and re. I don't want to say revisiting or reevaluating and thinking about the opportunity to become 40 this coming Friday. A lot of what Damn. I had to think about Damn. was I know. what a precursor. Go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but I was Gosh, like, oh. okay. Like what, a, what I've been thinking about a lot is like um, what people would say living on borrowed time. Um, I didn't have the most productive youth. Um, I didn't always make the right decisions. And uh, a lot of the times I found myself in a lot of situations on which I could have found myself not being here for 40. Um, in light of that, you know, I want to give a shout out to a lot of my homies, uh, TJ, Adrian, Lee, Tori, Jamal, uh, so many others that like were not having the chance to be here because of the life that we chose as young men and uh, the children that they have that will not be able to build a personal relationship with their father. Um, hence, a lot of the name of Uncle Raisin, because all those kids call me Uncle Raisin. You know what I mean? It's not just a title. Um, it's something that I live up to, you know? So, and being able to see 40, I always spend every day thinking about the ones who didn't get to 40 and the ones that they left behind and my obligation to make sure that they have something tangible of a male figure in their life, you know? So, for those who are here representing somebody or have to be here for somebody, do just that, all right? Don't feel like it has to be an everyday obligation or you have to overextend yourself to the point to where you don't feel the love and supporting someone because it feels more like a job than it does love. Just find the time to be present when you can be present. And in that time that you are present, make sure that that time is valued. So whether it's breakfast one day or a conversation over a phone or some text messages or a simple happy birthday, make sure that that's happening. If you don't know how long or how far you have to not or be able to do that and how impactful it is in the lives of others. You know that scene um, at the end of the Adam Sandler movie, Big Daddy, like when his dad like questions him like on the stand and he's like, don't worry about me. I'm going to be OK because I love that kid. Just like I'm here right now, do you love me? And then everybody gets on the phone and calls their dad. That's what I feel like doing right now. <laughs> I was just like, hey, man, hey, where am I? I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> I love you. That was solid. That was a, that was a hell of a coach's quarter, man. Thanks. I appreciate it. Look good for 40. Hmm? I said, look good for 40. Hey, you know what? I appreciate it. You know, I asked a few kids that I work with, like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm turn I, I have a birthday coming on Friday. What, how old do you think I'm going to be? One of the kids was like, Mr. You gotta be like 28. I was like, you know yeah. what? You don't have the tension today. You know you what? You failing mad. <laughs> That's, what I That's what I tell them all the time. I was like, oh, you not gonna make it. Right. <laughs> you know, said like 31. I was like, man, and I don't think like as much as it looks like a compliment, I think like their concept of age and living Insane. life in full is not what they really know. They today. think if you're 30, like you're ancient, right. and you should have a bunch of gray hairs right. or not. Right. Right. So, hey, listen, every day is a blessing. You know what I mean? If you wake up on the right side of the dirt, make sure that you're making it worth it. Yeah, and if you want to make it worth it and you want to continue to give these blessings, make sure you like and subscribe on this video. You know what I'm saying? Like we said, um, if you want donations, uh, any uh, thing that you want to shout out, if you want to be a potential guest, we're still looking for music. Make sure you put all that stuff in the comments and send it to us. Like we're looking, we're reading. We're looking at all this stuff right there. So like we're here, we're trying to be here for as long as possible and we're here for you. So make sure, like I said, like and subscribe, share. Even if you don't listen, just like and subscribe. Word. That's what we call it. Like, yo, yo, press play and you, you can put it on mute. I said, all right. my sons, like and subscribe.
<laughs> it's like that I already did. <laughs> but yes, we appreciate y'all. Until next time, I'm Uncle Raisin. This is Big Nasty. Hey.